In this video I'm going to show you how you can use an Excel database and InDesign to data merge both text and images. So I'm using Excel for Mac 2011. I'm pretty sure it'll work on a PC and CS6 but I think it'll work on older versions up to a point. First things first the way that your Excel spreadsheet is formatted is quite important. This particular um, spreadsheet is only a very small one, but the principles are going to be the same with larger ones. I have um, six records. I'll zoom up a little bit for you. And what's important is how the first field at the top of each column is, is named because that's going to be what you use to merge into InDesign. So I've got name, age, address, one, address, two, postcode. And most importantly, for pictures, this at pictures. It can be at images or at um, product, but the important thing is that it has an at sign. Unfortunately, if you're in Excel and a couple of other database programs, I believe, if you type an at sign and you try to go on to the next field, it just comes up with an error message saying th that function is not valid because the at sign is actually part of their function stuff. So what you have to do to get round that is put a single open speech mark just before the at sign and that lets Excel hang on to the at sign. So just remember when you're in Excel and you want to put an at to reference a tech, um, an image file, you've got to put that single speech mark before it. So what I've done is I've kept all my images in the same folder and I'm going to export my CSV, my comma separated values file from Excel into the same folder as the images because I don't want um, to have to type a really long um, path, file path name here. I'm sure you can put them in different folders, but you you have to have the file path entered. And because I'm a bit lazy, um, I've just gone with a colon because it will look for it in the same folder as the as the um, CSV file in that case. Apparently, you can try it with a forward slash as well, so we'll try that. So that's my Excel file. I could remove my spare images one. It's not a massive problem. So with that formatted how I want that formatted, I'm now ready to file, save as, not an Excel workbook, but a comma separated values file. And when I save that into the same folder as all the images live, you probably get a little error saying this workbook contains features that will not work or may be removed if you save it in a selected format. Well, we'll be fine. Just click the continue on that. So what you'll see in your folder now is the CSV file. I've already set up in design a document that has just some standard text boxes and an empty image frame in there. I've used layers, you don't have to. Um, one for the standard text, one for the image and even a non-printing one for any sensitive data like people's ages and I've just put it on page one. So 
pretty standard in design skills required for that bit. Where it gets clever is we're going to use the data merge panel and you'll find that in your window menu under utilities and data merge. Mine's in my panel here. And the first thing we have to do is choose a data source. It's quite nice in the data merge panel because you get um, a three step instruction guide on how you do do a data merge. So step one is choose select data source from the panel menu. So I'm going to go to my data merge panel menu at the top right corner and select data source. And in my data merge panel where all my images are and my original Excel file, the only file that's going to work is the data merge with pictures .csv file. So I'm going to choose that and open it up and what happens is it pulls in those columns using the name in row one and we've got our pictures one and that new images one that I added that hasn't actually got any data in it but we, we just won't use that images one but the pictures one we've got those files in there with a little bit of a mixture of a forward slash and a colon for the file path anyway so let's get this data merge information in I'm going to take my type tool and just double click on name. I'm going to leave the paragraph return in there and then drag the name data merge over the top of it and it replaces it. So I can do the same with the first line of the address, address one. I'll zoom up a little bit for you so you can see what's going on a little bit more closely second line of address I'll highlight that text that I want to be replaced with my address 2 data merge info and postcodes the last line in that text frame so I'm gonna just double click that and drag the postcode tag across but you don't have to have anything selected you can just position your cursor where you want things to go so you can see in my years when I've just literally positioned the cursor before my space and years text and I'm just gonna drag in fact I don't even need to drag it I can probably just click it um, the age value in there zoom out a little bit and then finally we're going to link this image frame to the path of those images by selecting it and clicking on the pictures or I could drag and drop pictures over that frame so I'm just going to click that now and you can see zoom up a bit it's put the word pictures with the angle brackets double angle brackets in there and that's our data document ready to go what's great about the data merge panel is you can actually click the preview button and have a look to see if that's actually working so you can see there's Andrew there his address his age and you can even turn off normal mode and preview that and our little preview buttons at the bottom of the data merge panel let us check each one of those so we know they're all working so you think woo lovely marvelous um, now I'm previewing it so I can't see the age I'm showing it in preview mode so that's why that non-printing age information is not there but if I go back to normal view you'll see that that's actually in there so simple as that one last thing if you want to have more than one record on your pages you can set that when you click the create merge document button at the bottom right hand of the data merge panel and I'll just show you that so we've got the records button the first one in there I'm choosing all records put a single record through or a range of records if you don't want them all and a couple of options are fairly self-explanatory generate overset text report with document creation alert when images are missing 
Um, what we want to do is we want to preview the multi record layout and it's all looking not too bad but if you want to play around with how it's sitting within that document you can click the multi record layout button at the top of the panel and just play around with margins um, some very strange margin values to get these to fit how I want them to um, I might want to just separate these out a little bit so um, I've got three up on a page so I can just expand the distance between each row but it's amazing you can't get that close to the bottom of the page before the last one will fall off but I bet if I add a little bit of top space Liz will fall off the bottom oh, it's not too bad but you can see how I'm actually able to tweak that around and I've got a total of six records in my database file so I have got two pages so let's have a look at our second one so when I'm happy oh I'll just mention the options button because this is quite handy you can actually set how you want your images to behave so image placement fitting fit fell uh, images proportionally fit images to frames fit frames to images preserve frame and image sizes fill frames proportionally so play around with those depending on what kind of images you're pulling through from your database and here you can set to remove any blank, uh, blank lines if there's any empty fields so information will snap together a little bit more so when I OK that I get my spinning wheel and it generates that new InDesign file and it tells me if there are any overset text problems so that's all good but you'll notice now I've got my original data merge file and I've now got a brand new file with a one after it that is my InDesign document with the number of pages required to fit all six of those records and from there you can PDF it or you can just file print it or do whatever you like as if it's a normal document so one thing to be aware of is it won't work on facing page documents so don't use data merge on facing page documents. If you do need to lay out records on um, facing pages, quite often people do with um, things like product catalogues and things, create the data merge and then convert the resulting file to a facing page document from the file menu document setup command. Checking that. You can convert one afterwards but it won't let you convert it before so I think the most important thing that I learned in this whole process is the Microsoft Excel data needs to have that at sign with the single speech marks at the front of it for it to recognize the image path and that you can keep things simple by having all the images in the same folder as the database CSV file and to be on the safe side the InDesign um, file as well so I've just ended up with my data merge um, start file I haven't saved this one yet I'll do a file save it'll prompt me where to put it and I'll just put that in the same folder just so that it can keep hold of those file paths. So hopefully that'll um, save you a bit of time and effort.